Hey everyone, Unmar here. Today we're going to be looking at how to create nice, clean wireframe renders out of Maya and V-Ray, and then how to quickly composite them using Photoshop so we can have something to add to our portfolios to showcase the wireframe uh, for our models. Uh, this is especially useful for anybody looking to, you know, get into the 3D art and 3D modeling field. All right, so let's go ahead and jump in. Uh, I'm going to go straight to Maya here. Uh, I'm going to just run through how to set up the material using a simple uh, teapot. This is the good old uh, teapot model from 3ds Max that I just brought in here from Ma to Maya. I have a uh, one camera uh, that I'll be using for rendering, and then a simple light setup just so you can kind of see uh, a three-point light setup here. And then nothing crazy in my render settings. It's just uh, half 1080 rendering here with the uh, GI low GI settings to uh, iterate faster. Uh, I am using progressive, so I should be able to uh, follow along uh, if you're, uh, you know, you have your own model. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do first is open up our hypershade. You can find that here and begin by creating a new material. All right, so I'm going to call this one, uh, it's just a standard V-Ray material, and I'll call this a uh, wire base. And uh, I will go ahead now and actually find the V-Ray wireframe material, right? Or the node, I should say. So we have the V-Ray 2D textures and we have V-Ray edges, right? So if I go ahead and just cl simply click that, uh, I can now see it in my hypershade. And what I want to do is middle mouse drag this, right? So with my wire base selected here and uh, viewed here, middle mouse drag V-Ray edges and drop it on diffuse color, the word diffuse color, and then you can see that it'll link that here. All right, then I want to select my teapot model and hold right click and assign material to viewport selection. So now that has been applied. All right, great. So with just all the default settings here, uh, we can go ahead and do a quick render and we can see what pops up. Uh, as you can see, there's not many settings. Uh, it's really a pretty straightforward uh, node here when we're working with the V-Ray edges. Uh, right now we have a black base with white wireframes. I typically like to uh, flip that, so I like a black uh, wireframe with white uh, background. And this is going to be the diffuse color of the, the material here, right? So as you can see that has changed. Uh, I can then jump back to width type and you can see that uh, it's set to pixel, so now if I want to increase the thickness, right? Right now they're pretty small. You can see a little bit aliasing he in here. So if I bump that up to at least two pixels, uh, you can see that now lines are starting to come in pretty good. Everything's looking really clean. Great. Uh, now, this is pixels, right? So this is dependent on your rendering resolution, right? So if I go to my render settings and common, you can see that it's set to 960 by 540. So if I, you know, start to do like 4K renders, 2K renders, and, and whatnot, I will have to increase that uh, just a bit, right? So if I have it at two, maybe three or four pixels, depending on uh, the resolution that I'm rendering. Or you could use world units, right? So world units here, this is 0.1 centimeters, so it's going to be 0.1 centimeters thick. You can see that it's a little bit thicker. Uh, it doesn't, you know, I'd say that's probably thicker than I'd like. Uh, here, you can see it starts to get a little bit, uh, you know, messy in the in, in the tight areas. You know, if I, if I start to increase that, it, it, it's going to get even bigger, right? So it gets real thick there. Uh, so I can go ahead if I wanted to, you know, like maybe 0.05 centimeters, and we get something that looks uh, quite a bit cleaner, and we can see the wireframes, right, uh, showing up really well. I will go ahead and stick with pixels and just use two for the purposes of this demo. So go ahead and use whatever you uh, like here, all right? So now back to this base material. Uh, this is going to have whatever material properties uh, from my base here applied to th the model, right? So that means if I go back to the wire base, increase, let's say, reflection color and drop glossiness a bit, uh, you can see that now this is going to be quite a bit glossy and shiny, right? So now we're starting to pick up highlights, we're starting to pick up reflections, and you know, in some instances, you want that, right? 
some instances you want to have a nice clay material. So if I have, again, like reflection color, and I drop this, drop reflection color and glossiness, I start to get more of this matte clay, which will kind of give us what we want, um, but sometimes it may be overpowering the wire, right? Now, in some instances, again, or I'd say even most, you'd want just the wire to apply to a textured model. So wh what I can do is use a surface shader material, or in V-Ray's instance, it's just a V-Ray light material. So I go ahead and create this V-Ray light material, and I'm just going to call it, you know, wire uh, light material. And I can simply take this V-Ray edges that I had applied to the wired base, middle mouse drag that to my light material that I just created, and you can see that it's connected properly. Great. And I can select my teapot here. So I'm just going to select it from the outliner and hold right click, apply and assign that material selection. Hold right click and assign material to the viewport selection. Okay. Now that I've done that, uh, you can see kind of the effect that this has. It is completely flat, right? There's no lighting information coming in. And this is ideal for you know, for compositing, uh, if you want to put it over a textured uh, object. So if I open up my history, you can kind of see what we have here, right? Uh, this is the one that we have. Here's the one with the wire base. If I go ahead and hit the AB, uh, I can set this to B, and then uh, and this is the V-Ray material, uh, and A is the surface shader, and you can see the difference here. Uh, so if it wasn't apparent before, you can see um, with the V-Ray material, all that lighting information reflection is showing up. With the surface shader, it's not. It's just completely flat. Uh, I tend to, if you're not sure, or if you want to experiment, render both, right? We're going to do some compositing here in a second uh, so you can see when and uh, where you'd want that. Uh, before we do that, I do want to show one last tip. Uh, if you are in... You know, you're, you're trying to display this model, and let's say you, you created a sub-D model. So, so meaning if I hit 3 and I smooth preview, uh, I want to see this smooth mesh, but I don't want to use, you know, mesh, uh, smooth, and then, you know, two uh, divisions. It starts to become really, really noisy, right? So, again, it, let's say I go ahead and render that. This isn't good to display and showcase for a portfolio piece, right? It's, uh, it, you know, looks clean and uniform, but we don't get to see the underlying topology. So instead, what I'm going to do is set that back to zero, uh, is we want to use a V-Ray displacement, okay? So how we want to do that is go to create V-Ray, V-Ray displacement, and apply single V-Ray displacement node to selection, all right? I'm going to go to this node. And under attributes, in the attribute editor, if you don't have that open, hit control A. Go to V-Ray, go to subdivision, and V-Ray, and subdivision and displacement quality. Okay, so what I can do then is you can tell it, uh, this is going to make sure that it renders as a subdivision surface, which is this right here, what you're viewing here, uh, without actually um, subdividing the mesh. And then we can tell it how many times to subdivide or how smooth. Uh, typically what you see in the viewport, I believe, is about three subdivisions. So four is plenty fine. Okay, so with all that being said, now if I go ahead and render, you can see that the model came is coming out smooth and subdivided, while at the same time showcasing the low-res cage. So again, the difference between uh, the low-poly low one and if I set this now to be, and the smooth preview one. So you can take a look at that. Now, I will be honest, sometimes in Maya, you can see that some weird artifacts start to happen. Uh, so just be careful about that. They don't appear in Max, 3DS Max or V-Ray. From what I've seen, it's just a Maya V-Ray bug. So hopefully I'll reach out to Cast Group and kind of find out why that's happening. Uh, it only happens when I'm using displacement, okay? So now that we have that, I will go ahead and jump to my other scene that I have with the textured uh, model. Okay, 
So uh, I'm just going to jump over here and close my rendering. And here's my model that's fully textured from Substance with all sorts of materials and whatnot. Uh, it's just this gun that I mo modeled for uh, one of my advanced modeling courses that I teach. But uh, everything looks good. Now, again, I want to take something that I fully textured and create some nice clay renders and wireframe renders. And you can see uh, here under render states, I've, I've done that through uh, setting up this wireframe layer. So if I go to this wireframe layer, you can see that now uh, I have this using render setup. And then if I open up Hypershade, you can see that I can uh, grab the material wireframe and it's the same one it's exactly what i used in the teapot demo and i just go ahead and render that out okay now uh how i've rendered that so if i go ahead and pull up my v-ray frame buffer and here's uh, the previous render okay so here's just this low poly render that i have and then i rendered a low poly uh mesh here uh, with the wireframe render with transparency. Now, if you want this transparency here, uh, you simply, all I had to do was uh, go to the wireframe material and just drop the opacity on it, right? So if I grab uh, material here, V-Ray light material, you can see that I, I dropped the opacity on this V-Ray light material. So if I crank that off, it's fully opaque and then I drop that, it's, it starts to become transparent. Uh, and I just applied that to these objects uh, that are supposed to be uh, transparent. So you can see that here. Okay, uh, that's how I did that. And then just kind of continuing down, you can see that I'm experimenting with just the low poly wireframe using the light material and then using a clay, uh, Surf, you know, regular V-Ray material, uh, messing with some AO here as well. Uh, but I ended up just using, because I was, I didn't want to worry about compositing later. I just enabled GI ambient occlusion here and turned that on and set that to 0.8, which was plenty fine for what I was trying to do. Uh, and then you can see the difference between this mode and this mode, right, is, or I should say this one. Uh, is the faceting, right? So if I have uh, this here, you can see that I have it smooth edge and then faceted, right? Faceted, smooth edge, faceted, smooth edge. So the way that I do that is if, you, if I go here, I can go to mesh display, harden edge, okay? Harden edge will just set the edge uh, smooth angle to zero and it will make sure it give it that faceted look. And again, sometimes that may be uh, what you want, right? So I'll undo that. And then, you know, you can see uh, just kind of the different uh, effects that I'm going here. Here, you can ex see exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, I have this weird artifacting coming from using subdivision uh, d with displacement here. So I decided to opt out and not use that. Uh, so this is clearly much cleaner and uh, looks good. Um, yeah, so uh, that's how I rendered uh, all of that. Uh, if you're interested in how I did render setup, I do go over that in my compositing CGI tutorial. Uh, otherwise, you can just simply apply and reapply uh, your materials. Great. So now that I'm in Photoshop, right, how did I create these images? It's really simple. Uh, if I go here, let me go ahead and just kind of hide this original one. Uh, here's my original render, and all I have is just some, you know, nice clean uh, curves adjustment just to boost some contrast. And then if I go now to my wire texture, you can see that I have this wire uh, here. So all you simply have to do is take this image, go to the normal blending mode, and then switch this to m multiply. And there you go. And that's gonna give you this nice clean render. Now, if you're like, oh, this looks good, but it, it's, it's not, popping off as much as I would like. Well, as long as you have it set to multiply, simply right click and duplicate layer, right? And then that's going to just help, you know, make that a little bit thicker and more apparent. And then you can see before 
after without having to worry about getting too much or too thick of lines you can simply just duplicate multiply with that uh, you can of course also use masks right so here you can see I have this nice mask this feathered mask uh, on this and again I can do the the same thing you know if I'd like to duplicate it uh, to make it more apparent uh, here and all you know if you want to see how I set up the mask I just simply go to one of these layers I can do this one that I just duplicated and I hit X and then D to reset um, my palette there and I will go and grab uh, the polygon lasso tool and then just simply like if wherever you want half you know just kind of create this marquee selection or this lasso selection and then I'm going to use just G with black right so black is going to be whatever is in this mask uh, is not going to show up now of course before I do that I have to make sure that I actually uh, do this in mask mode so add a layer mask and then you can see that uh, it just did that with the, the uh, paint uh, fill here and you can see that it took that from my selection right so again so I have this selection here it's going to take this foreground color and then just simply use uh, create add layer mask and then cool so we got that but now it's too hard well I can also feather that just to soften that mask so you can see it starts to soften that mask and you start to get this really nice effect this really interesting effect uh, here so uh, and then you can of course right I'm just using the original uh, the original light material so there's no lighting information coming through or even being multiplied and now if I wanted to mess with the other method right so now here's the same effect but this time I'm using clay so this is cool again just to kind of showcase the underlying topology and just to look at the model without you know looking at any of the textures right so again you have the smooth edge and then you also have the faceted look so you know, I'd say you're pretty safe using either or, um, you know, but I'd probably just stick with smooth edge unless they say, you know, turn in uh, a faceted look. All right. So um, that's it. So hopefully you guys learned a bit. Uh, appreciate you watching this. Hopefully it wasn't too long or anything like that. Uh, hoping, hopefully I'll be creating some more tutorials. Uh, if you'd like me to go over anything, uh, my V-Ray substance relator related Photoshop. Uh, let me know down in the comments. So thanks again for watching. Uh, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, guys. Take care. Bye.